Reliability engineering is engineering that emphasizes dependability in the life cycle management of a product. Dependability, or reliability, describes the ability of a system or component to function under stated conditions for a specified period of time. Reliability may also describe the ability to function at a specified moment or interval of time. Reliability engineering represents a sub-discipline within systems engineering. Reliability is theoretically defined as the probability of success, as the frequency of failures, or in terms of availability, as a probability derived from reliability, testability and maintainability. Testability, maintainability and maintenance are often defined as a part of reliability engineering in reliability programs. Reliability plays a key role in the cost-effectiveness of systems. Reliability engineering deals with the estimation, prevention and management of high levels of lifetime engineering uncertainty and risks of failure. Although stochastic parameters define and affect reliability, according to some expert authors on reliability engineering, reliability is not achieved by mathematics and statistics. You cannot really find a root cause by only looking at statistics. Nearly all teaching and literature on the subject emphasize these aspects, and ignore the reality that the ranges of uncertainty involved largely invalidate quantitative methods for prediction and measurement. Reliability engineering relates closely to safety engineering and to system safety, in that they use common methods for their analysis and may require input from each other. Reliability engineering focuses on cost of failure caused by system downtime, cost of spares, repair equipment, personnel, and cost of warranty claims. Safety engineering normally emphasizes not cost but preserving life and nature, and therefore deals only with particular dangerous system failure modes. Higher reliability levels also result from good engineering and from attention to detail, and almost never from only reactive failure management. A former United States Secretary of Defense, economist James R. Schlesinger, once stated, Reliability is, after all, engineering in its most practical form, history. The word reliability can be traced back to 1816, by poet Coleridge. Before World War II the name has been linked mostly to repeatability. A test was considered reliable if the same results would be obtained repeatedly. In the 1920s product improvement through the use of statistical process control was promoted by Dr. Walter A. Stewart at Bell Labs. Around this time while Lord E. Vable was working on statistical models for fatigue, the development of reliability engineering was here on a parallel path with quality. The modern use of the word reliability was defined by the U.S. military in the 1940s and evolved to the present. It initially came to mean that a product would operate when expected and for a specified period of time. In the time around the World War II and later, many reliability issues were due to inherent unreliability of electronics and to fatigue issues. In 1945, M. A. Minor published the seminal paper titled Cumulative Damage in Fatigue in an ASME journal. A main application for reliability engineering in the military was for the vacuum tube as used in radar systems and other electronics, for which reliability has proved to be very problematic and costly. The IEEE formed the Reliability Society in 1948. In 1950, on the military side, a group called the Advisory Group on the Reliability of Electronic Equipment agree, was born. This group recommended the following three main ways of working. Improve component reliability. Establish quality and reliability requirements for suppliers. Collect field data and find root causes of failures. In the 1960s more emphasis was given to reliability testing on component and system level. The famous military standard 781 was created at that time. Around this period also the much-used military handbook 217 was published by RCA and was used for the prediction of failure rates of components. 
the emphasis on component reliability and empirical research alone slowly decreases. More pragmatic approaches, as used in the consumer industries, are being used. The 1980s was a decade of great changes. Televisions had become all semiconductor. Automobiles rapidly increased their use of semiconductors with a variety of microcomputers under the hood and in the dash. Large air conditioning systems developed electronic controllers, as had microwave ovens and a variety of other appliances. Communication systems began to adopt electronics to replace older mechanical switching systems. Belcor issued the first consumer prediction methodology for telecommunications, and SAE developed a similar document SAE 870050 for automotive applications. The nature of predictions evolved during the decade, and it became apparent that die complexity wasn't the only factor that determined failure rates for integrated circuits. Cam Wong published a paper questioning the bathtub curve, see also reliability-centered maintenance. During this decade, the failure rate of many components dropped by a factor of 10. Software became important to the reliability of systems. By the 1990s, the pace of IC development was picking up, wider use of standalone microcomputers was common, and the PC market helped keep IC densities following Moore's law and doubling about every 18 months. Reliability engineering now was more changing towards understanding the physics of failure. Failure rates for components kept on dropping, but system-level issues became more prominent. Systems thinking became more and more important. For software, the CCM model was developed, which gave a more qualitative approach to reliability. ISO 9000 added reliability measures as part of the design and development portion of certification. The expansion of the World Wide Web created new challenges of security and trust. The older problem of too little reliability information available had now been replaced by too much information of questionable value. Consumer reliability problems could now have data and be discussed online in real time. New technologies such as microelectromechanical systems, handheld GPS, and handheld devices that combined cell phones and computers all represent challenges to maintain reliability. Product development time continued to shorten through this decade and what had been done in three years was being done in 18 months. This meant that reliability tools and tasks must be more closely tied to the development process itself. In many ways, reliability became part of everyday life and consumer expectations. Overview, objective The objectives of reliability engineering, in the order of priority, are to apply engineering knowledge and specialist techniques to prevent or to reduce the likelihood or frequency of failures, to identify and correct the causes of failures that do occur despite the efforts to prevent them, to determine ways of coping with failures that do occur if their causes have not been corrected, to apply methods for estimating the likely reliability of new designs and for analyzing reliability data. The reason for the priority emphasis is that it is by far the most effective way of working. In terms of minimizing costs and generating reliable products, the primary skills that are required, therefore, are the ability to understand and anticipate the possible causes of failures, and knowledge of how to prevent them. It is also necessary to have knowledge of the methods that can be used for analyzing designs and data, scope and techniques to be used within reliability engineering. Reliability engineering for complex systems requires a different, more elaborate systems approach than for non-complex systems. Reliability engineering may in that case involve system availability and mission readiness analysis and related reliability and maintenance requirement allocation, functional system failure analysis and derived requirements specification, inherent design reliability analysis and derived requirements specification for both hardware and software design, system diagnostics design, fault tolerant systems, predictive and preventive maintenance, human factors, human interaction, human errors, 
manufacturing and assembly-induced failures, maintenance-induced failures, transport-induced failures, storage-induced failures, use studies, component stress analysis, and derived requirements specification, software failures, failure, reliability testing, field failure monitoring and corrective actions, spare parts stocking, technical documentation, caution and warning analysis, data and information acquisition, organization, effective reliability engineering requires understanding of the basics of failure mechanisms for which experience, broad engineering skills and good knowledge from many different special fields of engineering, like, tribology, stress, fracture mechanics, fatigue, thermal engineering, fluid mechanics, shock loading engineering, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, material science. Definitions reliability may be defined in the following ways. The idea that an item is fit for a purpose with respect to time. The capacity of a designed, produced, or maintained item to perform as required over time. The capacity of a population of designed, produced, or maintained items to perform as required over specified time. The resistance to failure of an item over time. The probability of an item to perform a required function under stated conditions for a specified period of time. The durability of an object. Basics of a reliability assessment Many engineering techniques are used in reliability risk assessments, such as reliability hazard analysis, failure mode and effects analysis, fall tree analysis, reliability-centered maintenance, load and material stress and wear calculations, fatigue and creep analysis, human error analysis, manufacturing defect analysis, reliability testing, etc. It is crucial that these analyses are done properly and with much attention to detail to be effective. Because of the large number of reliability techniques, their expense, and the varying degrees of reliability required for different situations, most projects develop a reliability program plan to specify the reliability tasks that will be performed for that specific system. Consistent with the creation of a safety cases, for example ARP 4761, the goal of reliability assessments is to provide a robust set of qualitative and quantitative evidence that use of a component or system will not be associated with unacceptable risk. The basic steps to take are to first thoroughly identify relevant unreliability hazards, e.g., potential conditions, events, human errors, failure modes, interactions, failure mechanisms and root causes by specific analysis or tests. Assess the associated system risk by specific analysis or testing. Propose mitigation, e.g., requirements, design changes, detection logic, maintenance, training, by which the risks may be lowered and controlled for at an acceptable level. Determine the best mitigation and get agreement on final, acceptable risk levels, possibly based on cost-benefit analysis. Risk is here the combination of probability and severity of the failure incident occurring. In a de minimis definition, severity of failures include the cost of spare parts, man hours, logistics, damage, and downtime of machines which may cause production loss. A more complete definition of failure also can mean injury, dismemberment, and death of people within the system and the same to innocent bystanders. In this case, reliability engineering becomes system safety. What is acceptable is determined by the managing authority or customers or the affected communities. Residual risk is the risk that is left over after all reliability activities have finished, and includes the unidentified risk, and is therefore not completely quantifiable. The complexity of the technical systems such as improvements of design and materials, planned inspections, fuel prof design, and backup redundancy decreases risk and increases the cost. The risk can be decreased to ALARA or ALAPA levels.
Reliability and Availability Program Plan Implementing a reliability program is not simply a software purchase. It's not just a checklist of items that must be completed that will ensure you have reliable products and processes. A reliability program is a complex learning and knowledge-based system unique to your products and processes. It is supported by leadership, built on the skills that you develop within your team, integrated into your business processes and executed by following proven standard work practices. A reliability program plan is used to document exactly what best practices are required for a particular system, as well as clarify customer requirements for reliability assessment. For large-scale complex systems, the reliability program plan should be a separate document. Resource determination for manpower and budgets for testing and other tasks is critical for a successful program. In general, the amount of work required for an effective program for complex systems is large. A reliability program plan is essential for achieving high levels of reliability, testability, maintainability and the resulting system availability, and is developed early during system development and refined over the system's life cycle. It specifies not only what the reliability engineer does, but also the tasks performed by other stakeholders. A reliability program plan may also be used to evaluate and improve availability of a system by the strategy of focusing on increasing testability and maintainability and not on reliability. Improving maintainability is generally easier than improving reliability. Maintainability estimates are also generally more accurate. However, because the uncertainties in the reliability estimates are in most cases very large, they are likely to dominate the availability calculation, even when maintainability levels are very high. When reliability is not under control, more complicated issues may arise, like manpower shortages, spare part availability, logistic delays lack of repair facilities, extensive retrofit and complex configuration management costs, and others. The problem of unreliability may be increased also due to the domino effect of maintenance-induced failures after repairs. Focusing only on maintainability is therefore not enough. If failures are prevented, none of the other issues are of any importance and therefore reliability is generally regarded as the most important part of availability. Reliability needs to be evaluated and improved related to both availability and the total cost of ownership due to cost of spare parts, maintenance man hours, transport costs, storage cost part obsolete risks, etc. But, as GM and Toyota have belatedly discovered, TCEO also includes the downstream liability costs when reliability calculations have not sufficiently or accurately addressed customers' personal bodily risks. Often a trade-off is needed between the two. There might be a maximum ratio between availability and cost of ownership. Testability of a system should also be addressed in the plan, as this is the link between reliability and maintainability. The maintenance strategy can influence the reliability of a system, although it can never bring it above the inherent reliability. The reliability plan should clearly provide a strategy for availability control. Whether only availability or also cost of ownership is more important depends on the use of the system. For example, a system that is a critical link in a production system e.g. a big oil platform is normally allowed to have a very high cost of ownership if that cost translates to even a minor increase in availability. As the unavailability of the platform results in a massive loss of revenue which can easily exceed the high cost of ownership, a proper reliability plan should always address RAMT analysis in its total context. RAMT stands for Reliability, Availability, Maintainability, Maintenance, and Testability in context to the customer needs.